For more than two decades, an Oklahoma scientist has been working to find a cure for a disease that kills hundreds of thousands of people worldwide each year. Now, that scientist, with the help of a small group of people and a handful of investors, is on the brink of beginning human trials for a treatment that has already shown it can cure sickle cell anemia. Inside a small suite of offices at the University of Oklahoma Research Park, a group of technicians and PhDs are working on a compound that has shown it can cure sickle cell anemia in the test tube, in mice, and in baboons. It's the decades-old dream of Dr. Robert Broyles, who holds patents in the U.S. and several other countries for his discoveries. The initial idea on how to cure the disease came to him in 1989. We've been pretty sure we could do this for over 20 years, but it, it takes a while to develop it. The cure Dr. Broyles and his team have developed involves a form of gene therapy. We had found a certain uh, way that genes were regulated in, in frogs when they go from tadpoles to through metamorphosis. It's similar to going from uh, fetus to newborn and a human being. And we, were, we had found something that would turn these genes on and off, these hemoglobin genes. With a doctorate in biochemistry and molecular biology and the help of his longtime business partner, Dr. Robert Floyd, they founded the Sickle Cell Cure Foundation. To help the nonprofit raise money for the research, the two men formed Epimedics, a for profit company they used to seek out new investors and spread the word of their groundbreaking research. Research that is now on the verge of going to human trials. We were almost ready to go to the FDA and say we would like to file this uh, treatment for sickle cell disease. On Dr. Broyles' staff is Dr. Carol Curtis, who is putting together the small book the FDA requires to seek approval for human trials. So we're saying to them, we have this treatment that is indicated to be a treatment for sickle cell disease. We'll give them this booklet and say, here's where we are. We think we're ready. Uh, what do you think? Dr. Broyles expects the FDA will ask for more safety data before giving the green light for human trials to begin, and that won't be a problem since the data is already being made by the metric ton. This compound has been used in agriculture on human crops for years, so the EPA has a, a huge dossier on the safety of the substance. Dr. Broyle says GRT, or gene regulation therapy, was made possible with the help of private investors, I2E, OCAST, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Doctors Broyles and Floyd say it will be several more years, though, before a treatment will be publicly available. It would be a pill they would have to take for the rest of their lives periodically. We don't know how often yet, but um, we hope as early as five, no more than 10 years. Also at the University of Oklahoma Research Park, Oklahoma company Selexis Pharmaceutical Corp is in phase two clinical trials on a drug that treats one of the main symptoms of sickle cell, the intense pain that occurs because of the malformed cells clogging up blood vessels. Dr. Broyles calls their compound EDX-17 and says their research shows the compound has no side effects. Ultimately, we would want it to help the, the children before they even start getting symptoms of the disease. They have their own, the fetal hemoglobin, partly in their blood until about six months, six to nine months after birth. And that starts to go away, and the sickle hemoglobin takes over, and that's when all the bad symptoms start. An estimated 1,000 Oklahomans have sickle cell anemia, but no one even knows where they are located. In the United States, the disease primarily affects African Americans, but it is showing up in Native Americans, Hispanics, and Caucasians. Worldwide, sickle cell is common in people who live along or near the equator, and it claims more than 350,000 lives each year.